What's up guys, welcome back to another video in this series of content advent calendar videos where we have a new video every day up to Christmas Eve. And today we're gonna dive into Lyrum and we are gonna take a look at one simple trick, one simple masking trick that will improve your photos. It's a great way of spicing things up a little bit, adding a little bit of kind of dynamic look to your photos and it's really, really easy. As I mentioned, we're gonna use masks. I'm a huge fan of using masks and we've talked about that in other videos, but we are gonna use a new technique that we've never looked at before. We're gonna intersect one mask with another. Sounds complicated, but it's not. Let's dive in. I've got a couple of photos that we're gonna do this with because it can work on a real variety of photos. But this one, first up, this was taken at Goodwood Festival of Speed and I think it's a nice photo. This has already been edited. So I think it you know, looks good, it's got a style to it, but there are certain things we can do to increase the separation between the subjects, so the car, and the background to make the car pop a little bit, but in a different way to ways we've looked at in the past. So first up, we're gonna come up here to the masking panel. We're gonna go ahead and click radial gradient. Let's just draw a nice big radial gradient there over the car. We're gonna do this one, the whole width of the actual photo. You don't have to do that, but in this case, it's gonna work really nicely. And what I'm gonna do is come up here to these three little dots on mask one. I'm gonna click that, intersect mask with, I'm gonna go select subject. Now Lightroom is gonna find the subject and it's now going to only apply that radial gradient that we just made to the subject that it thinks is there. So it's gonna intersect that mask we made with the subject. So in this case, you can see it has now masked out the subject. But if we come up here to where this little tick box invert is, we can just click that. And now you can see we've got this radial gradient that we drew on there but it's not affecting our subject, the car. Now you can see there's little bits behind the car which are not affected here and here. We can come in and sort those out in a bit if we want to. Uh, but I think for the purposes of this, this is probably fine. Now what we're gonna do is bring the dehaze down. We're gonna bit of negative dehaze. Look at that already, that, that looks so good. It just, I really love this technique, it's just really good. We're actually gonna bring the contrast down a little bit as well and immediately, if I just turn this mask off and back on, I really like how much that's adding to the photo. First of all, it looks really good. And second of all, it is really adding some nice separation between our subject there and the background. It also works particularly well on this photo because there's already kind of a little bit of mist kicked up by the water and stuff like that. But we could go up here, create new mask. Let's actually just go select subject. And this time we might add some clarity, add a little bit of exposure and a little bit of contrast. Now we've got a major, separation in terms of contrast, right? The subject has high contrast, the background of the subject has low contrast, but we haven't just applied that across the whole photo behind the car. We've just got this nice radial gradient. And I think that that looks really, really nice. If we turn off all the masks, this is what it looked like before, and this is what it looks like now. I just really, really like the look of that. You could then go ahead and brush in maybe some more clarity or even add some negative dehaze to certain areas. Maybe I'd add a bit more behind the car here, but I really, really like how that has worked. That's probably all I would need to do to it. This has entered my workflow for a lot of photos now. So I really, really like this technique. Let's move over to another image. Let's move over to this one. I'm gonna show you, you can do something different. Now this is another image that I'm really happy with. It's edited, you know, I'm done with it, but actually we can do a little bit more and I'm gonna show you how we can use the same technique to actually achieve something slightly different with this particular image. So let's go ahead and again, we're gonna go masking, radial gradient, and I'm gonna draw that over our subject here. Now, again, we're gonna come up here to these three dots, click that, intersect mask with select subject. That's gonna just select her now with that radial gradient. We're gonna untick invert, you get it. You get what we're doing. You get what we're doing. We're gonna bring the exposure down a little bit on this one. And you can see it's just affecting behind her, but we don't actually necessarily want this all around. So I'm gonna click here and I'm just going to drag that mask over to her left, I suppose, the right side of the photo. And let's bring that exposure down a little bit. We are basically now just creating a nice shadow, which isn't going to be affecting her. It's just gonna be affecting the space behind her because we've intersected it so it won't actually affect our subject. This is a really, really useful way of being able to make shadows within Lightroom. If I bring that down like that, and then if I turn this mask off, that's what it looked like before we did this, and that's with the shadow. Now that's pretty good, I'd say, because we can still come in, we can affect the size of this. I mean, I'm I'm pretty happy with 
being able to do that. We can then go in and do a create a new mask. Let's go radial gradient again. Of course, this will work with other types of masks as well. Let's just bring that over on the uh, the left side of the photo, the right side of her, I suppose, for her, from her perspective. Let's click here. Let's intersect mask. Let's do select subject again. This time, let's just bring up the exposure a little bit. Now, we are just affecting our subject here with this radial gradient. So we've got kind of a nice feather. If I was to press O on the keyboard, you can see exactly where this mask is. So that's really nice. We can just bring that exposure up a little bit. Let's bring the highlights up a little bit so that we just brighten that side of her a little bit. Let's go create new mask. Let's go brush. This time we don't need to intersect it, but I'm going to do a little bump in exposure, a little bump in clarity. Let's go something like 26. Just use the mouse scroll wheel, bring that down. I'm just going to pop that onto her eyes there. There's actually another way we can do that within Lightroom now. We've got a full video on that, which I'll pop a link down in the description so you can check that out. And let's turn off all of these masks and then turn it back on. Look at how much of a difference we've made. That's kind of crazy. It makes the original version of this photo that is, again, it's edited. I was very happy with it. Kind of look very flat and boring. And then we add this. We've got this nice shadow here. It's very soft. It's very believable. It's not too much. We can edit it as well. We've got a little bit of a pop in the eyes. And we've just bumped up the exposure on her side here, which is facing the window. If we really wanted to, we could come in, do a linear gradient, Drag that in from the side. Let's make that nice and sort of feathered like this. Negative bit of negative dehaze. Bump that exposure up a little bit just to brighten it as if the sunlight is coming in. Maybe even warm that a touch as well. I think that's quite nice. I'd probably leave that off if I'm honest with you, but I don't think it looks horrible at all. And this, this is really powerful. Using that intersect feature really allows you to do an awful, awful lot with your photos, whether it is adding something behind your subject to add an extra kind of layer of separation, whether it is adding in shadows, whether it is adding in kind of a bit of exposure onto the side of your subject like that, but with a nice feather that you would get from a radial gradient. It's a really powerful way of doing things. And, and the masking in Lightroom is so good now that I really just think that it's it's very, very usable and it is just reducing the amount I need to go over to Photoshop by such a huge amount. It's pretty crazy. Now that's just a quick tip, a really quick tip that has found its way into kind of my everyday workflow with Lyrim. It doesn't work for every photo, or rather it's not necessary for every single photo, but it does work for an awful lot. And actually I think if it's done well and done subtly, it can enhance an awful lot of photos. It just brings the viewer's eye to where you want it to be. It just helps kind of pull everything together and really create a great end result. Now there's links down in the description so you can go check out all of the kit used for this video, for these photos, all that kind of fun stuff. It's all down there. Don't forget to like and subscribe. We've got new videos every day through to Christmas Eve. I will see you in the next video, but until then, as always, thanks for watching. Bye.